Dubai is no more alien to the rain. So obviously, we are seeing quite a lot of these incidents. With the air motion, there is a water motion as well. So that's what we bring in. That's one of the reasons why we are able to keep the water clean forever. Some of the innovations as well as sustainable practices within the industry. So I will be talking a little bit about Spun City. Spun City is a concept of bringing in uh, the water into the urban environment in their designs. Dubai is no more alien to the rain. So obviously, we are seeing quite a lot of these incidents nowadays and how do we have to handle it? So our infrastructure traditionally doesn't handle these water water uh, ploggings and all of it. So we need to incorporate those ones. Uh, we, within these deserts, obviously everyone I, of you are from Dubai or UAE as such. So we, these are some of the challenges we are seeing within the region. Either we have excessive rains or we have no rains at all. We have extreme weather conditions as well as our soil is not very suitable for a lot of vegetation and our infrastructure is also not suitable. So that's where we need a new way of design to bring into the green. Obviously this is an ideal world. If we bring in the whole green into the urban infrastructure, it would bring in immense benefits. Some of them are the social benefits. Obviously it would improve the well-being and health, improve fitness, stress reduction, community engagements will be enhanced, socializing, community bonding, and it will also create quite a lot of sustainability awareness that is very important at the home level as well. <coughs> Likewise, it improves the quality of life. Not just only the social benefits, it's also about environmental benefits by greening or incorporating the green design within the infrastructure. With reducing the tree count, we can reduce almost 25 kilos per, uh, per year per tree. It can absorb the carbon dioxide. It increases the biodiversity because it brings in 11% increase in the birds so more birds can come into the system. Temperature reduction will be at least 2 degrees with, uh, with increasing the green cover. In some of the green areas within the community, uh, for example, Sustainable City has got a lot of trees. The, the environment there is slightly better than the other areas where you have lesser number of trees. So those are environmental side of things and this doesn't have to be expensive. It can be implemented economically as well as retrofitted as well, which we will discuss just now. It improves the jobs, it improves the recreation, tourism, <coughs> as well as infrastructure investment in these. So if compared to the existing traditional one, going in the sustainable way, it can improve on it. It brings in new investment. The COP28, which is happening now, is more about solutions. A lot of commitment is made towards sustainable investments and sustainable practices. So these, some of those initiatives and funding can also be tapped into by keeping the cities green, which we have seen about getting in the environmental benefits. So why, how do we do it? Obviously we all know that we would love to have this kind of uh, green infrastructure integrated in. Is it possible to do in an existing environment? So that's what we will, we will look into. Um, see, uh, here, uh, what we are bringing with Aspen City is watershed back into the region. Uh, what we are looking into is watershed is what it is. Obviously with the urbanization we have, uh, we have lost the watershed. Obviously we are blocking the water waste. So by bringing the water waste into the system, we, we again address this water. So like a sponge, sponge has got two functionalities. One is absorbing the water and second is discarding the water or squeezing the water. The same way a city has to absorb every drop of water. In, in there, in the absorption side, we look into three. How do we handle the storage of the absorbed water, retention of the water, as well as infiltration into the ground as well. On the, the other side, which is utilization side, we need to look into the how do we utilize the water which is harvested or collected and then draining of it as well as purifying it. So when we collectively look into all of these six elements, we call it a sponge city because the city is acting like a sponge. And when I say city, it doesn't have to be the whole city, it can be a building as well. This is an overly simplified model of a sponge city with my four blocks. But within the four blocks, we have first block is harvesting of the water. So we need to look into how we harvest the water or redirect the water. 
So that's the first element of it. Traditionally, the water is channeled through the uh, gutters and contours, natural gravity. So that's one. And then second is all the harvested water should be collected and stored. So that's the second block of our uh, ecosystem. And the third is the bioretention ponds. That's where obviously it's a natural plants can improve the quality of water. And then the fourth block within, within the Span City is greening, sustainably greening that. Um, so the, these are the four blocks. When we handle all the four blocks, we can bring a sponge into the, into the city ecosystem. I will explain each one of them, how we look into it. From a perspective of our technology, obviously we work in the technology space, in the innovation space. I will talk from our, our technology standpoint. It doesn't have to be our technology, it can be any. The principles can be utilized. For the harvesting, what we, what we have created, we have created permeable surfaces. These permeable surfaces are unique unique technology which can replace the existing surfaces of made out of concrete or asphalt and these have got a functionality which is harvesting of the water it has got a dual functionality while it is harvesting the water it is also filtering the water so at the source itself when the rain falls on the ground every drop of that rain is collected and stored um, so this can be retrofitted as well as you can see uh, here this is an existing road which is retrofitted with these uh, pavers uh, which which now uh, collect the water and debris and everything stays on the top which can be swept away um, but the, the way the water is channeled is in this manner on the sides of the roads or any of these paving all of these surfaces can harvest the water and then it is channeled through the contours. The design is done in such a way that the water is channeled through the contours, gravity fed into a storage. I might have another, another bit of picture, another cross section of this. A typical design is like this. So we harvest the water through the surfaces of the paving roads as well as the garden as well, from the landscape as well. We can collect the water. All the collected water can then be channeled through into a gravel, into a storage facility, which you will see. And this storage facility, what it can do is it can keep the water clean forever. That is also something which I will show you as well. So the, the purpose is we are harvesting the water. After the water is harvested from a larger surface area, it can be collected and reused. That's what is the purpose of it. Is. So we are not discarding the water into the sand, but we are collecting and reusing the water. So this is one such area where we have used our our uh, 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 permeable surface as a similar to replacing a concrete paving, uh, but this surface has got a functionality which is harvesting of the water. And uh, all the water which is collected, I mean this application is similar to the, our existing paving, similar sort of an application. Uh, paving under under paving is prepared in the same way, but below it is where you have a gravity gravity bed contours are created so that we channel the water into a storage. One building, uh, this is a Spun City building. All of the surface area, what you see is permeable surface, and the storage is constructed underneath this grass area. So the surface of the of the storage can be reutilized. It doesn't have to be just like a storage standing in a pond but the surface can be utilized for parking it can be for park and everything i have another nice example to show you of a public park utilizing this feature so these are some of the larger areas uh, this is the next block within our spawn city is a storage facility <coughs> we have created the surfaces which can collect the water so instead of gravity fed, uh, gravity fed um, Gutter system versus these ones, you can collect more water, clean water. So that's the one one of the feature of the harvesting. Now, after the water is collected, what do we do with it? We can discard into the drainage and throw away, but you might as well store it. By storing in a traditional storage, you need cleaning of the water. Maintenance of keeping the water clean is a big cost. Whereas this one, which is a honeycomb structure, keeps the water clean. So that's the beauty about this honeycomb structure. So this is our air permeable and water permeable surface where we keep the constant motion of the water thereby keeping the water clean. So this brings in decentralized storage into the ecosystem. You can have any number of water storages across the area. You don't need to have single storage. So you don't have to channel the water longer 
where you, you lose the water. Whereas you can store the water closer to where you want to use it.